Hello everyone. A very good morning. Today we will talk about your important five mark questions in your university exam and also in your clinical practice. That is your Henot's colon purpura. It is nothing but your immune complex mediated vasculitis and it is your most common small vessel vasculitis so you have uh, your large vessel medium vessel and your small vessel vasculitis right among the vasculitis it has been classified as large vessel medium vessel and small vessel so for example in your large vessel vasculitis uh, th those diseases are your gencell arteritis and your takayas arteritis well coming to your medium vessel these are your kawasaki disease and polyarthritis nodosa well coming to your small vessel vasculitis these are your microscopic polyangiitis your shock stress disease weakness granulomatosis will all come under your small vessel vasculitis so how this small vessel vasculitis occurs it occurs because of your iga deposition it is occurring because of iga deposition within the small vessels okay so which age group is most commonly affected the so most common age group that is being prone to your henot's colon purpura or between 3 to 10 years male children are more affected than your female children okay fine next coming to the pathogenesis of your henot's colon purpura so there will be an iga deposition in the systemic small vessels right so since there is a how does this iga deposition takes place because of their defective glycosylation and there is a defective glycosylation of the hinge region defective glycosylation of the hinge region of your iga1 that is your subclass of your iga so when there is a defective glycosylation of the hinge region of iga1 it leads to the exposure of that hinge region so once this exposure of this hinge region occurs your auto antibodies uh, that is antibodies that is produced by your own body so the auto antibodies recognize this hinge region and leads to the formation of uh, immune complex so this leads to so these are being recognized so these are being recognized by the auto antibodies this will lead to the formation of your immune complex. This formation of this immune complex will get deposited in the small vessels, thus leading to your vasculitis, right? Okay. So, how does this deposition or how does this exposure of this hinge region occurs? Uh, so, when does this exposure occurs? It occurs when there is any trigger, trigger like in form of infection. So in form of infection if there is any trigger it can lead to the exposure of that hinge region that is being recognized by your auto antibodies it is leading to the formation of your immune complex okay so the triggers of this infection can be for example it can be by your group a beta hemolytic streptococcus second one by your staph aureus Third, it can be by your mycoplasma. Okay. So, these are some of the example of the triggering factors that can lead to the exposure of that hinge region. Uh, so, again, another one more point in this pathogenesis is that there is a genetic component related to this HSP. That is your Henot's colon purpura. So, the genetic that is being linked are your HLA B34 and second one is your HLA drb1 so these are the two genetic components that are being linked to your hsp uh, so the person having these uh, genetic complexes can are more prone to develop your henot's colon purpura fine next coming on to the clinical features so the most hallmark feature the main hallmark feature of your hsp is your rash how do you describe this rash it is your palpable purpura so the rash will be a palpable purpuric rash this palpable purpuric rash it will be symmetrical in distribution it mainly occurs in your gravity dependent areas gravity dependent areas means in your lower extremities it mainly occurs in your lower extremities second it can also occur in the extensor aspect of your upper extremity 
it can occur in the extensor aspect of your upper limb okay so these are the main points regarding the rash that is your skin lesion so we have a tetrad for this clinical features of your hsp so what is the tetrad one is your rash that is your palpable purpura second one will be your nephritis that is your renal involvement will be present third one can be your arthralgia arthralgia and or it can be arthritis your fourth clinical or fourth uh, component that is leading to the tetrad is your abdominal pain so we will see one by one in detail so first we have finished our rash second one we will see about our arthralgia or arthritis this is one of your musculoskeletal features so when your small vessel vasculitis are involved in your musculoskeletal region it will result in arthralgia or arthritis it mainly involves your large joints and while it is resolving it does not leave any deformity it does not leave any deformity and it can resolve within 2 weeks so about 75 percentage of the children affected with hsp can present with your arthralgia or arthritis okay next third one is your abdominal pain this abdom why this abdominal pain occurs this occurs because of your bowel angina this abdominal pain is mainly because of the bowel angina and the child can present with melina vomiting okay fine next so in this abdominal region the most uh, common or most serious uh, complication related is so the most serious complication related to your abdominal condition in child with hsp are one is your intussusception second one will be your mesenteric ischemia and third one will be your intestinal perforation okay so these are the most serious complication related to your abdomen okay in child with your um, henox colon purpura four coming to the renal involvement renal involvement the child can present with simply an isolated microscopic hematuria or the child can have features of nephritic and nephrotic so what are the features of nephritic so features of nephritic are your gross hematuria hypertension and edema so these are the main triad that is being formed in your uh, glomerular nephritis a child can present with nephritic features or the nephrotic features or the child can present with isolated microscopic hematuria uh, so among these four uh this uh, clinical features your abdominal pain will be the most common one about around 80 percentage of the children can have this abdominal pain as your clinical feature in a child with what is this hsp okay next what are the indications for biopsy in a child with hsp so indications for renal biopsy not the skin biopsy i am telling it is indications for renal biopsy in child with hsp so indications can be one is your significant proteinuria second when the child is having a significant hypertension third when the child is having raised or elevated serum creatinine value so these are the three indications for your renal biopsy in child with hsp okay next when you take a biopsy what can you look that is when you take a skin biopsy so mostly we will take a skin biopsy in a case where the child is not falling into the criteria of your hsp or when the child is having atypical features we will do a skin biopsy so in skin biopsy what you can expect so you have to look for leukocytoclastic vasculitis so what is this leukocytoclastic vasculitis as the name suggests there will be a leukocytes that is being infiltrated in your small vessels so the most common the leukocytes that can be infiltrated in your small vessels are your neutrophils and your monocytes these are the two common leukocytes that are being infiltrated in the small vessels of a child with the hsp fine when you do a immunofluorescence study 
so when you do a immunofluorescence study you will be seeing IgA deposition along with that you will be seeing C3 and fibrin deposition so when you do a immunofluorescence you can look for IgA C3 and fibrin deposition so the main points in your pathology is when you do a skin biopsy you have to look for your leukocytoclastic vasculitis second point is in your immunofluorescence you will identify IgA C3 and your fibrin deposition coming to the diagnosis so how do you diagnosis the diagnosis is mainly a clinical one it doesn't depend on any of your lab laboratory criteria it is mainly your the clinical so here you have a criteria for this hfsp that is called as ular criteria so what are the features that is forming this criteria are first one is your palpable purpura okay so the when the press when the child has a palpable purpura in the absence of so note the point in the absence of coagulopathy and thrombocytopenia so in the absence of sorry in the absence of coagulopathy and thrombocytopenia along with this palpable purpura this child should have any one of the following i mean which i am going to tell the child should have any one of the following given below okay so it is any one of the following it includes one is your abdominal pain which should be acute diffuse okay this abdominal pain should be acute and diffuse in nature second the child can have arthritis or arthralgia third when you take a biopsy a skin biopsy of this affected child you should look for in your immunofluorescence you have to look for your iga deposits and fourth there should be a renal involvement so the child with palpable purpura with any one of the following that is either it can be your abdominal pain or arthritis with arthralgia or your biopsy features or your renal involvement renal involvement mainly showing your uh, even isolated microscopic hematuria is a, is a positive point in this so when a child is having an active renal involvement you should do a weekly urine analysis report when the child is having a resolving a uh, phase of your uh, renal involvement then you have to do a monthly once urine analysis till six months of the progression okay so this is regarding your renal involvement and your ular criteria next what are the lab investigations there are no uh, lab finding is diagnostic of your hsp so there are non specific so you will be always looking for the non specific findings in the lab features so what are the non specific things you will be having are one is your leukocytosis second one is thrombocytosis the child can have normal platelet count or an increased platelet count but the uh, neither uh, but the child will not have a low platelet count that when you have to remember so it is your thrombocytosis third the child can have mild degree of anemia your esr and your crp will be increased there is no use of doing your ana test there is no use of doing your ana test second when when you do the iga it will be elevated in uh, like around uh, 40 to 50 percentage of the children but this is not required so no need to do iga and ana supposing if you do serum albumin it will be decreased because of the loss of protein in the renal okay the serum albumin can be low when the child is having your nephrotic features okay fine next uh, the child can present with other uh, organs other organs can be involved because it is a systemic mediated immune i mean it is a system mediated vasculitis right so other organs can also be involved so the child can have the features of carditis male child can have the features of orchitis the child can also have testicular torsion features which is an emergency okay Fine. the child can also have these kind of features next so what will be the treatment for this child so the treatment is usually it is a self-limited one and for the mild cases it will resolve on its own for the mild hsp there is no need of treatment so they do not require treatment it will resolve spontaneously next for a child with moderate to severe hsp you will start the child on with the oral uh, prednisone that is your oral steroid 
so why because they are prone to develop to a chronic kidney disease so they need a significant immunosuppression so so you will start the child on with a oral prednisolone this is prednisolone at the dose of 1 to 2 mg per kg per day for 3 months along with that you have to add ace inhibitors supposing if the child is not getting the result uh, with this your oral prednisolone that is your mainly your renal involvement your creatinine is not getting reduced or the nephrotic range proteinuria is not getting reduced with your oral prednisolone you can also add on with other immunosuppressant like azathioprine and mycophenolate morphine if the severity persist fine next in the third condition where there is more than 50 percentage of your glomerular involvement when there is more than 50 percentage of the glomerular involvement you can give iv methyl prednisolone so you can start the, the child with the iv methyl prednisolone in a pulse dose for around three days so pulse dose meaning you can give around 10 to 30 mg per kg per day for three days followed by oral prednisolone for three months you have to also consider other immunosuppressant like azathioprine and mycophenolate morphine okay if next supposing if the child has progressed to a chronic renal failure with the involved more than 75 percentage of your glomerular crescent being present you can also try on the child with the renal transplantation so the rate of recurrence in a child with this hsp the rate of recurrence in a child with hsp is around 15 it is high it is 15 to 30 percentage so child can have a recurrence of your hsp so this is about your henots choline purpura uh, this is the main five mark question in your university exam and you can get more number of cases in this henots choline purpura in your ward also so you have to know what are the clinical features a child can present with what is the diagnostic criteria what are the lab investigation you have to look for in this child okay so these are the main important points i have told here the source i have taken this hsp is from Nelson only okay i have not taken from anywhere else it is only Nelson. fine thank you have a nice day let's all learn pediatric together